Hello, and welcome to the Boggy Creek Monster. With this video, I am sort of breaking my rule of not doing a video specifically devoted to a Bigfoot. While doing my top 5 dangerous cryptids video earlier this week, I originally had this cryptid on the list as the rare occurrence of a Sasquatch attacking a human. However, after reading into the alleged attack and all the other sightings, I realized many of the stories have painted a bit of a skewed image of this creature. To start off, the Boggy Creek Monster is also known as the Falk Monster, both of which are after the Bigfoot located in Falk, Arkansas, with sightings in Boggy Creek and the Jonesville area. Reports normally describe the creature as being 7 to 10 feet tall and weighing in at 300 to 800 pounds. With most accounts when it comes to cryptids, or any animal for that matter, eyewitness ability to accurately size a creature vary greatly. This cryptid is said to have long dark hair, red eyes the size of dinner plates, and it leaves an odd footprint behind that has only three toes. What really makes this version of Bigfoot different from the others is the fact that it is said to have a terrible stench that is described as a mix between a skunk and a wet dog. If there weren't sightings of the creature, I'd assume people were smelling a bear, but that doesn't appear to be the case here. It is at this point that I would like to go over the alleged attack that took place and was very uncharacteristic to all other Bigfoot encounters. On May 1st, 1971, Elizabeth Ford was sleeping on her couch in her home and was awoken by a terrible smell as well as the sound of strange noises outside of her home. To her terror, she saw the arm of what she thought was a bear reaching through one of her windows. As the story goes, her husband Bobby and his brother Don were returning home from hunting and saw the creature outside the house where they managed to scare it off. At midnight, the monster returned, but this time it grabbed Bobby by the shoulders and threw him to the ground while he was standing on the porch. It is said that Bobby managed to crawl away from the Bigfoot and it ran off into the woods again. Mr. Ford was later treated at the local hospital for scratches on his back, as well as suffering from mild shock. Later it was mentioned that Bobby had fired his rifle on the creature during both encounters, and he claimed to have hit it. During an investigation of the attack, no blood was found, but footprints with three toes were found. The house had multiple scratches on the porch, siding, and windows. I should point out that the Ford family had lived at their property for less than a week and moved out shortly after the encounter. This incident raises a few questions, but I'll return to this later in the video. The Ford's encounter wasn't the only sighting of this cryptid, as reports go back to 1908 and have continued up until 2016, resulting in almost 60 separate encounters. I won't go over all the reports in this video, but I'd like to cover a handful. As stated, from 1908 till 1971, the year of the attack, there has been 25 separate reports of people from Jonesville and Falk with no encounter turning aggressive. Most sightings mention the creature walking along the properties and then disappearing into the forest. One report mentioned that this being frequented the farm of a man named Smokey Crabtree and would make all kinds of loud noises. However, Smokey was quick to mention that at no point did the monster ever harm any of his animals. On many occasions, the human interaction wasn't as peaceful, with reports of people shooting at the beast was frequent. From what I read, no one seemed to be able to hit it, but even as such, it would just turn and run away. After the Ford's report, there have been 31 additional sightings that even included reports on the same day as the alleged attack. Much like the previous accounts, all of them encountered the beast and it quickly made its way into the nearby forest. A lot of the reports mentioned coming across the Bigfoot when it ran across the road in front of vehicles. When reviewing the sightings, there were only two instances of what could be considered an attack, and that is including the Ford report. The other notable incident was in 2000. A bow hunter saw the creature approaching his tree stand, and when it got close enough, it reached up and grabbed a hunter's arrow. During the time period of the Ford attack, a movie came out in 1972 called The Legend of Boggy Creek, which was a story loosely based in the event, but in a horror tone. At least four more movies on the same topic have been made, with various points of the actual events included, but all of them choose to make it a horror-themed movie. So was the Falk monster a savage beast that attacked an innocent homeowner, or is there something else possibly behind this aggressive attack? When I started my list of dangerous cryptids, I had this one as one of the topics, until I really started to read into what happened. Even though I had all the information written out, I knew I couldn't include it due to it not being the blood-crazed beast 
than I would like to portray. So it was at this point I would like to break down the events and see if there isn't some clarity as to what happened. First and foremost, the 60 reported sightings, excluding one, all describe the same type of behavior, which is common for most all species of Bigfoot encounters. The creature made every attempt to escape when it was seen or tried not to make human contact. This does not make the Ford story questionable alone, since any animal can live its life without incident and then suddenly snap. So let's look at the reported encounter where the Ford family supposedly met the creature on a bad day. Starting with the first event, the creature was seen reaching through the window with its arm. This would be terrifying to see, but it wasn't an aggressive act. It possibly was reaching for food, but I can't be certain. With Bob and Dawn's admission that they fired on the creature, I'm sure this is what was used to scare it away from the house. I don't blame the two men, as most would react the same way if they came across anything looking like it was trying to break into your home. Here's where things get a little interesting. Bob started to sensationalize the story later on with the second encounter. In the original report, he stated it threw him to the ground while he was on his porch, but later said it kicked in the door trying to get in. I understand when something happens that is terrifying, it can make an eyewitness lose parts of the story, but I think the two scenarios are a bit too different to be accidentally forgotten due to the heat of the moment. Going with the original report of being grabbed and thrown to the ground, I can only think of one thing. If this creature stands at over 7 feet tall and weighs over 300 pounds, which we can infer isn't fat, but muscle, and all that happened was being thrown to the ground, I would say the victim was lucky. Or mistaken as to what the creature was doing. An animal with those stats could have easily torn its victim limb from limb if it chose to. What I think happened, if I believe the encounter occurred, is the creature came back after already being shot at, saw Bob with his gun, and pushed him down to escape not wanting to be shot again. I know this is mostly speculative, but the patterns don't match with an aggressive attack. This is well linked with the fact that many experts question the authenticity of the prints found on the property, with most going as far as saying they were 99% sure it was a hoax. If this creature actually exists, I think the Ford encounter needs removed as a sighting, since I see no evidence that points to this being as one of the very few aggressive Bigfoot. I must apologize to you, my fans, for going outside of my normal content guidelines of both not posting about Bigfoot and not staying subjective. After last week's video, I felt I needed to add some insight into an event that had tried to paint a terrifying picture of the cryptid known as Sasquatch. I also feel it is my duty as a paranormal YouTuber to call out the hoaxers who enjoy causing mayhem in the cryptid community. On a further note, I will leave a link to a well put together list of encounters with this creature in the description. And as always, I would love to hear your input on this topic. With that, be safe, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.